Hello, this is Jon Kobold from EMD. In this video, I would like to show you how you can use Photoshop to do the rubber work in WinPro photo montages, and then use the modified photo in a WinPro report. Here, I have an empty project with just some elevation data and some randomly added VCGs. And the other day, I took a photo from around this position, and now I want to create a photo montage by dragging the image file into the map window and dropping it. Now a camera object is created based on the EXIF data from the image file. Okay, now I would like to make a calibration of the camera model something like this and this is just to make a situation where we really need to do some advanced rubber work we have the vtgs going here uh, in front of the trees and we have a vtg here going in front of this uh, this pole over here so now to be able to work with photoshop on this image i need to go into the post process settings like this and then it's focusing the post-processing tab in the camera object uh, properties dialog. I'm going to select this option. And now this file, this PSD file, which is a Photoshop file, is going to be created each time I press the render button in photo montage. And this file, which is a JPEG file, is a file that is used uh, in the reports. None of these two files exist right now, but when I uh, later on press the render button, this one is uh, PSD file is created. I am going to edit in this file and save it as a JPEG file, and the JPEG file is then used in the reports. I could have specified that this should be a JPEG or a, a BMP file or something like that. And uh, if I preferred another editor than uh, Photoshop, but uh, in this case, I want to use Photoshop. So now I'm going to press OK. Now I'm just going to press the render button. And it is a rather large uh, image file, so it's splitting it into subtitles. And like this. And as you can see, we have this uh, VTG in front of uh, the trees and the, the wires is going uh, behind the VCGs and uh, we're going to change that in Photoshop. So I press this button and now you can see I have a link to the Photoshop file and uh, I can open it by clicking on the, this menu item. Okay. So now we are in Photoshop, and as you can see, WinPro has created a, a, a project here with two layers. One layer here with the original photo, and the other layer is the rendered photo from the photo montage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to select this layer here and press Ctrl J to make a copy. And I'm just saving this layer here as a backup. Uh, you can see there's a locked, uh, there's a lock on, on both the layers, so it means you cannot edit them. So I'm just going to keep, the, keep them as uh, backups. Now on this layer, what I basically want to do is uh, I want to erase the part of the VTGs that should not be visible. For instance, here you can see. Um, I'm sorry about this uh, flickering, it's a, a Photoshop issue on my computer. But as you can see, some part of the uh, VTGs is in front of the tree and I don't want that. So I'm going to simply uh, delete it from this layer and then uh, the bottom layer is showing through. And the way I recommend to do it is uh, by creating a mask layer. I'm pressing this button, I'm, I'm creating a mask layer. A mask layer is um, 
defining what part of the layer that is visible and which part is not visible. If I paint black while on, on this image here, while the mask layer is selected, it's going to be invisible. I can show you by uh, selecting this pencil and selecting black as a foreground color. So now if I paint here, it's a weird brush I'm using, but you can see it is, uh, I'm painting black on the mask layer and the half, that has the effect that the VCG is, uh, is uh, erased because it's uh, erasing uh, parts of this layer and you can see through and down on layer one. I'm going to get the VCG back again by painting white. So like this. So uh, that is a smart way to work because uh, it is non-destructive as it's called and you can always go back and make changes to whatever you erased by simply painting white again. So if I'm pressing control zero now I can see the whole image and now I'm going to uh, in a smarter way uh, erase all these parts that is not in the sky area. So that is a, a smart way I can do it in this particular situation. Uh, I'm going to do it uh, by selecting the original image here and then I'm going to take the magic wand tool and you can see I set the tolerance to 40, I am use, use anti-aliasing and I'm not selecting contiguous. And now I'm pressing out here uh, in the sky area. I'm deselecting this one and I'm trying again. Uh, there you can see that now it's selected uh, the whole sky and I'm going to inverse it by pressing Control shift i I could have used the selection option here, inverse. So now it's the opposite of the sky that is selected, which is, which is the ground and the pole and this pole and so on. Now I'm enabling this layer again, I'm selecting the mask and if I now press delete, I'm going to delete on the mask and uh, that it means that the selection, the current selection is going to, uh, to be given the, the background color which is black. So I'm trying that. As you can see now uh, on the mask layer, a big part of it, all the selected area is, is black and that has uh, the effect that uh, these parts of the VGGs is erased, which is what I wanted. I now press Ctrl D and I'm going to have a look, a closer look here. And you can see it looks uh, pretty nice. It's, uh, it would have been a little tricky to, to do this inside uh, LinPro, if not uh, completely impossible. You can see the trees uh, is going in uh, nicely in front of the VTG here, but <laughs> the, the truck seems to have the same color as the sky, so I have a small issue here. I can uh, try and select the this selection tool, the polygon. I'm just going to select uh, this area here and I'm still on the mask uh, here and I have still have black as a background color so I can press delete and control D to deselect and let's see over here looks quite nice here uh, on the ground but some of the wires are still going behind the VCG so there's still an issue there. Uh, the pole is interesting and here that looks very good. So I would say this uh, would have been more or less impossible to do in, in, uh, in photo montage. So if this should be uh, perfect then I would have to go in uh, for every VTG and every uh, power line here and make sure that uh, they go in front of the VTGs. I can just do it here um, for these three down here to, to show you how I would do it. You can do it, of course. You can do everything in many different ways in Photoshop. Uh, but I would st uh, still use this uh, polygon uh, selection tool. And if I select from here to here, a little bit down, and back again. 
double click and delete. And I can do something similar down here. I'm just trying to double click here, then it's a triangle, delete. It still looked okay, so I can do it the same way down here. A little down and double click, delete. Okay, that's it's not so visible that's in front, but I think it's good enough. Well, that that one way to do it. You could you could also have had used the uh, the brush tool and and painted uh, with black here on on the mask layer. But uh, there's many ways to do it. I think this is good enough for for this demonstration. I'm pressing Control Zero. And uh, now I say I'm happy about this uh, image here, and I should now save it as a JPEG file to be able to use it in the reports in Photoshop, no, in, in WinPro. So uh, first I'm going to press uh, save just to save the image, and then I'm going to say save as. Oh, it's still being saved. I'm trying again. Save as. And uh, I'm just going to select here, it should be a JPEG. And um, you can see that it is saved here, um, the original file. And uh, I'm now saving it uh, with the extension as post-processed. Okay, uh, here it popped up on my other screen. I'm just selecting this and now Photoshop is doing something crazy again. Okay, and then I'm going to close the image and go back in WinPro. Okay, now you can see that if I press this button, both these menu items is enabled because both files now exists. You can see the create time out here. You should be aware that every time you press the render button, this PSD file is overwritten. But if you have made changes to the Photoshop file, in this case a Photoshop file, then there's going to be made a backup from um, WinPro. Um, but it is a little confusing if you are not aware of this. So I could try and do it. You can see the timestamp is uh, like this now here. If I press the render button, then I would expect the timestamp to be changed. Yes, it is. So now uh, the file is uh, recreated. And if this was not on purpose, you could go and find a backup file in uh, the project folder. The JPEG file is still the same. And that is the file that is used in the reports. So now I would like to create a report and see if that is true. Here I'm going to, oh, here. I press the photomontage arrow and there's only one camera and it is selected. So I'm just pressing okay. Now it is copying this JPEG file we created into the project file and saving it together with this calculation. I, I'm going to press this full page photo here. Now I fear it's going to pop up on the other screen. It did. I'm dragging it over here. So you can see it used the, the correct file. And uh, that is how uh, this is done. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this and uh, found it helpful. If somebody has uh, some good tips and tricks for Photoshop, I'm very interested uh, to hear about it. But uh, so far, this is it for me. Thank you for watching.